Hi, Tim Warner here, host of the Inform IT Certification Reference Guide. In this installment of On Certification, we're going to inaugurate a new screencast series called Test Taking Skills Clinic. This particular episode is focused on Microsoft Exam 7640, Windows Server 2008 Active Directory Configuration. Our agenda for the screencast is to meet the exam very briefly, meet the book from which our practice questions are derived, and then get to work. Now, I kind of haven't let the cat out of the bag. What we're going to do in this particular screencast series is look at exam-taking strategies. It's one thing to have the subject matter under your belt. It's another thing to know how to approach these certification exam items. That's what this series is all about. I have a lot of experience taking IT certification exams. I also have a lot of experience writing the questions themselves. Therefore, I'm approaching this to help you develop and sharpen your test-taking skills. Now then, this exam is 7640, one of the Microsoft Certified Technology Specialist, or MCTS exams, in the Windows Server 2008 space. Quite frankly, everyone, you can benefit from watching all of these screencasts. Although we're focusing on the 7640 Server 08 stuff, the principles that we're dealing with aren't really relevant for the subject matter. We're dealing, as I've said, with the test-taking skills proper. Nonetheless, the questions that we're doing this time around deal with Server 08. And this exam is of interest to those of you who are pursuing either the Technology Specialist for Active Directory Configuration or, more likely, the top-tier credential that Microsoft calls the Microsoft Certified IT Professional, or MCITP. For those not yet in the know, the MCITP is the replacement for the old Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer, or MCSE, title. The book from which I've pulled these two practice questions is our own exam cram book here at Pearson called Exam Cram 7640 MCTS, appropriately enough. Our author is a fellow named Don Poulton. He's from Burlington, Ontario. We have quite a few Canadians writing our exam cram books. I'm not sure why it's worked out that way, but it has. He has an interesting background. He's a former environmental scientist. He worked in that field for a couple of decades, as a matter of fact. Nevertheless, he's been with computers since the punch card days. That predates me. I've been in computers formally and informally since about 82. Don has been in MCSE since Windows NT version 4. And he's a great author. He's a good writer, he's a good technical professional, and he's a good trainer. I've also pulled these items and generated screen captures not by scanning book pages. That's too old school. We're now in the 21st century. I've used another Pearson product called Safari Books Online. If you go to safaribooksonline.com, you can check it out. I've also developed screencasts at the Inform IT Certification Reference Guide on this subject. This is a subscription-based service where you can get to not just Pearson Books, but O'Reilly, Microsoft Press, Lynda.com CBT videos, tremendous library of IT books. You can view the entire book online, see these little PDF icons. They're very, very tiny, but you can actually download and print chapter-by-chapter -chapter content from these books in the Safari library. Final thing that's cool about Safari is that you can perform searches across the entire library. Let's move on. We're doing two questions per screencast. This is question one. Now, we're looking at this from a meta standpoint. We're not going to get hung up with the subject matter. Microsoft questions over the last several years have taken, I don't want to be too critical of Microsoft, but they've put less time and effort into their questions. In one sense, that helps us as test-taking candidates because, in a sense, it's easier to pass the exams. The Server 03 questions used to be humongous. Now you'll find with Vista and Server 08, the questions are a lot less robust. You'll typically have a small paragraph that sets the stage for the question, maybe a middle paragraph that gives you additional detail, and then finally a question. I'm not going to say you can ignore 
most of the question? That's definitely not the case. The first couple of questions are typically the boilerplate. You'll find the same leading couple sentences in most questions. That's probably the least important part of the item. The detail part, the middle part of the item, is where you have to separate the wheat from the chaff. And then I always tell students, pay most attention to the last couple sentences in the item stem, because that's where the proverbial money is in the item. Now this particular question says, what should Evan do to answer this particular question? And it says, each correct answer represents part of a single solution. Choose three answers. This is important. Microsoft doesn't use the choose all that apply approach, so please don't worry that you'll ever be asked a question by Microsoft, choose all that apply. That tends to drive a lot of test takers nuts because you're never quite sure if you've answered the whole question correctly. Another thing Microsoft does is does just this, where it has you give multiple answers where each correct answer represents part of a single solution, or the other case that you'll see is each correct answer represents independent solutions. See? So there's the deal here. Now I'm not going to read this whole item. I'd like you to just pause your video player or if you're on an iPod or an iPhone, read it through, pause, and come up with the right answer and let me know what you think. Ready? The correct answers are B, D, and E. Now let me go forward and make sure. Yes, B, D, and E are the correct answers. Now, how did we get that? With a question like this where you've got so many choices to choose from, what I tend to do is try to group. In this case, it's a little bit easier to do. You can kind of see that these items are grouped together in pairs. You'll be very fortunate if you find Microsoft does this. In other words, they put their items in kind of grouped, matched pairs, where you can see A and B are kind of related, C and D are kind of related, and E and F are kind of related, and you can just kind of compare and contrast between those two choices. Next question. Looks like it just has two paragraphs. The first paragraph is thicker than the second one. The second is where the money is. It tells us that Maggie is configuring the placement of global catalog servers to optimize logon and resource access. Which configuration should she use? Remember, pay particular attention to the questions being asked, and that is the money or what you're being asked. Up here, this is, like I said, some boilerplate introductory text, and there's just perhaps some filler that is just there to distract you. The last sentence or two is the money of the item where you really have to parse your words. The answer set here, we have to choose just one of these five choices. I call this an A-B type item where you've got kind of like you can split this in two. You see that you've got to decide whether you want a single or two global catalog servers and you've got to decide whether it's Atlanta site only, San Jose site only, or each site. Now to make this question a little bit easier to answer, I literally would just cover up one half of it and answer one side of this at a time. First, analyze and use your skills whether it's going to be a single server or two. Once you've decided that, you can effectively get rid of the extra choices. And then look at the other side and decide whether it's Atlanta, San Jose, or each site. The answer to this question is B. Now, as far as wrap-up is concerned, again, my name is Tim Warner. If you think of Time Warner, it's pretty difficult to forget my name. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions, you can ping me. My email address is timothy.warner at pearson.com. Homepage for this screencast channel, of course, is informit.com forward slash uncertification. You can read my blog at InformIT Certification Reference Guide. Just go to the informit.com homepage, do a site search, or you can go to the upper right corner and click the Reference Guides link, and you'll see me there. Thanks for joining. I hope that you like this series. We'll definitely be adding to it in the future.